it's Amy here from Plans Meet Paper, and today I wanted to come on and chat with you guys about why I switched from a personal size planner to an A5 size planner for the current time. And um, while I'm talking about that, I also just wanted to point out a few things that you might want to think about if you are new to planning and trying to decide what size of planner will work better for you or if you're just kind of unhappy with your current planner situation and you're thinking about switching, just some things you might wanna consider. So um, for those of you who are new to my channel, I have been in a personal size planner for years, um, probably the last like four years, pretty much I've been in a personal size binder, six ring binder, and the last two years, I've had almost the exact same setup just with a few tweaks here and there within that binder. So I love personal size. Um, in general, it's it's really helpful. It's a great in-between size that's easy to take with you on the go, but also easy to have enough space to write. So that's why I was in personal size for so long, and that's why I had 2021 set up in a personal size binder as well. Um, but <laughs> just starting off 2021, of course, being the planner girl, I was watching some other people's videos of their setups, and anytime I saw an A5 setup, something about it was just calling my name, and I was just feeling like this is where I needed to be for this year. So the couple of main reasons why I switched to this size is, one, I just really was craving bigger rings, so basically more space on the rings. So that's the first thing you'll wanna think about if you are trying to decide what planner size is gonna work best for you. In general, now I know that there's customizations and there's lots of different brands of planners that you can purchase, but in general, if you go with a smaller size planner, so like a personal size or a pocket size, they are gonna have smaller rings as well. So my planner rings um, in my personal size were about three-fourths inch, I believe, so um, 0.75 inches. And then in the A5 size, it's a little over an inch. So that makes a big difference, just the ring size. And then having bigger rings also allows you to have more pages on the rings or a different, more th thicker paper, high-quality paper on the rings um, with the same number of pages. So it just allows you to kind of have different things in your rings. And that's really what I was craving, is I wanted to have a few more pages in my rings. I was feeling like I really wanted to have kind of dedicated, predated uh, daily pages. So I've been at least adding daily pages in for like several weeks out. And I've been using these daily pages that I created that are like, um, they're kind of like block schedule style daily pages. So I wanted to have those in for longer in advance um, and those take a lot of space. And then I was also really craving and wanting to have some thicker paper. So in my personal size binder, the paper that I've been using for about the past two years is um, Tomo River paper which is really, really nice. It's super thin and it doesn't, pens and things don't bleed through it. Um, and since it is so, so thin, um, it's almost almost like, um, like Bible paper or paper that you'd find in um, something like that. Because it is so thin, it also does not lend well to um, having it slit. So, um, rambling a little bit here, but I really was hope wanting to have this as an option for me with my daily pages, having the pages slit, which allows you to take pages in and out of the rings without having to open the rings. But with this really thin Tomo River paper, that doesn't work so well. Um, if you slit this and then take it in and out, it kind of just damages the pages bad enough that they don't stay in at all anymore, um, just because it is so, so thin. But because it is really thin, you can keep a lot of pages even in smaller rings. So that's, again, something to think about depending what size of planner you're in. Um, for 2021, I was just really feeling like I wanted to have some thicker paper. This is actually 28 pound bright white paper. 
And so I wanted to go ahead and use that so that I could have that option of slitting it and pulling it in and out without damaging the pages. So that's one of the reasons that I switched to A5 size is so I could have bigger rings, I could store my daily pages in my binder for a little bit longer, and I could use that thicker paper because my rings are bigger. So that was the first thing. The second thing that I wanted to incorporate is I wanted to have more tabs um, because I really like having things separated out. So I'm going to do a full setup of my planner, this A5 size, pretty soon here on my channel. And um, so stay tuned for that if you want to see the whole thing. But I do really like to have all of my sections kind of broken up with all of the different um, topics having their each divide each their own divider and so that's something else that you'll want to think about dividers do take up a fair amount of space on the rings even if you get really thin dividers these are super thin um, clear plastic but they still do take up quite a bit of space when you stack up 12 of them for instance all on top of each other so I wanted to have 12 sections and therefore I needed bigger rings again. So that was another reason I switched to A5. I did have a lot of tabs in this personal size planner as well, but because I had so many tabs going on, it was taking up a lot of space on my rings also, which was limiting my ability to keep lots of months in and lots of daily pages in and notes and things like that. So that was another reason. And then also, I wanted a larger size page. Um, I am a big fan of white space when I'm planning. So um, when I'm writing a list or planning a project or taking notes, I really think it helps my mental clarity to have some white space on the paper. Um, again, if you are fo have followed my channel, you know I'm a very functional planner. I don't tend to use hardly any decoration. I add a little color here and there with highlighters but mostly I'm just sticking to a black pen, white paper, and a highlighter. And um, I do find though that that white space, that extra space on the page really helps me to kind of focus better on whatever is written on the page and makes it easier for me to read. So that is one of the reasons I wanted to switch to this larger page size. It isn't because I wasn't able to fit my text on these smaller pages. It was more about having more space, white space on the page. So that is another thing you'll wanna consider is kind of what type of writing, what type of paper, what aesthetic is pleasing to you and helps you to focus and to you know use your planner the way you wanna use it. For some people, they really enjoy having a very full page. And so that might mean a smaller planner would work better for you. Um, some people maybe prefer more white space like me, or if you have larger handwriting, most of the inserts for an A5 size binder are gonna have a little bit bigger rule than a page for a personal size binder. Um, you can find large, you know, wide ruled paper in both, but just in general, larger handwriting might work better in a larger binder and smaller handwriting might work better in a smaller binder. So that's something else to think about. Um, also just how much do you tend to write on each page? Uh, this year I am doing a lot of list making, a lot of kind of journaling style and just lots of notes. Um, so since I tend to take quite a few notes, I do tend to fill up pages a lot, especially if I'm in a personal size. And so I just wanted to have more space on each page, more space to, to take notes and really, you know, think about what I wanna get done each month or what I wanna get done in a project. And so I really was, I'm enjoying this larger page size as well. And so that was one other thing. And then lastly, you just want to think about the portability of it. So of course, being a smaller size binder, a personal size is going to be way more convenient to take with you on the go. This size binder will fit in almost any 
purse. I mean, of course it won't fit in like a really small satchel or something, but um, most regular, you know, standard size purses or bags, this is gonna fit in there. It's gonna be very portable, easy to pull out. Um, it's small enough, you could even use it as like a wallet and pull it out at a grocery store or at a doctor's office and it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, the A5 binder, that is definitely not gonna work. It's, these tend to be very heavy, especially depending what material it's made out of and if it has like cardboard backing. This is a Filofax Finsbury binder that I've had for quite a few years. Um, and it is, especially when you fill it up with paper, it's very heavy. I would not wanna take it with me to the grocery store or something. Um, and it wouldn't fit in most of my purses, especially with the other things I need to have in there. So portability is definitely something you wanna consider. Um, for me right now, I have a two-year-old and a newborn baby, and it is a global pandemic, so I don't go anywhere, let's be real. <laughs> I pretty much only go to the grocery store and the doctor's office, <laughs> and, um, the doctor's office, I do actually take this with me because I usually have notes and questions that I want to ask, but I would probably be bring, bringing a bigger notebook anyways to take notes in to that type of appointment. And then to the grocery store, I just take out the individual page that has my grocery list on it and take that page with me. Um, so I'm not concerned about portability at this season of life right now, but if that is something that you need to keep in mind, you might wanna consider a smaller binder for that reason as well. So um, my binder stays at home, pretty much stays open on the counter all day long, and so a larger size works just fine for me. Um, and so those are the main reasons why I switched from a personal size binder to an A5 size binder for 2021. I just wanted to come on and film this video since I'm gonna be doing some other planner videos soon and I'm in a different binder than I was just a, a month ago. So I wanted to come on and share my reasoning for that and also give some tips in case you are considering switching sizes as well. So I hope you guys are having a great day. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below and I will see you guys for another planner video soon. Thanks, bye.